Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, I got Casey Adams, 18-year-old freaking phenom running around freaking showing people how to build an empire. What's up, Casey? What's going on, Brad? Thanks for having me. Man, it's been a long time coming. It has. It's You freaking, we've been trying to connect for how long? Shoot, it's been months now, back and forth, and finally made it to Vegas, and I know that our schedule's lined up, but it's definitely been over six months, I think. Yeah, if you guys don't know Casey, go follow him, Casey Adams one on Instagram. Dude's running around with Gary V, freaking <laughs> everybody who's anybody, especially now that you, you're with me. So well, Brad Gary, Lee, no. Gary V, Andy <laughs> Frisella, Eb Milet, who else you had? You had them all. We got Mr. Grant Cardone on OGC has been on the show. Yep, who yep. else? We got Dean Graziosi. We Dude, got Dean Graziosi, who's a stud. Yes, He's he been is. making money since freaking you were like <laughs> just freaking a twinkle in your daddy's yep. eye. <laughs> 100 percent. yeah i've done over 80 interviews now with just legendary entrepreneurs it's been super cool to sit down with all those guys and I, m- mainly entrepreneurs but then also um sitting down with some musicians and just different people that are building an empire in, in their own way yeah uh and you're 18 yep eight to turn 18 in july are you gr- have you graduated graduated high school june 6th this year did you go to normal school yeah i've been this public school grew up in virginia small town right near richmond you, you ever heard of Rich Redman. Rich Redman. I don't think so. He's the drummer for Jason Aldean. Okay. He was in here the other day, dude. That dude's a cool son of a bitch. Okay. Who's the Who's the best or coolest interview you've had? Hmm. It's a hard one. I think I think for me, one of the ones I was super excited for. You know, drama from Young and Reckless. Sure. So um, he was on the TV show Robin Big with Rob Deerdeck yep. and Big Black, and I used to watch their show all the time. And I got him on the podcast um in like. February I just reached out to him via DM and I was just super pumped up for that and then that was super cool because I mean I watched him on TV on MTV for literally like years so that was probably the most exciting one I would say and now me and drama are are homies he just hooked me up with a whole build your empire neon sign since we moved out to Arizona but that one was probably one of my favorite oh I seen that is that yeah. who got that for you? Yeah, drama hooked it up. Yeah, that's right on. Yeah, it was dope. And I noticed you're wearing the cloud and dirt or what are those The dark called? clouds and dirt. They actually dropped this weekend. I got Gary Vee's team hooked it up early. Oh, nice. From K-Swiss. Are you and Gary tight? <laughs> I, we're not, I wouldn't say we're tight, but um, he knows who I am. We'll go back and forth via email, and I want him to speak at one of my events in the future. But Why don't you freaking send him a link to this podcast yeah, when yeah, it drops so me and him can freaking battle <laughs> it out on this patience I'll, thing. Let's make it happen. I'll, I'll send it to him. Now, you heard my rendition of having patience or not having yep. patience and of course you know gary's position on it who do you agree with tell the truth mofo no, don't do the, the truth is the only guessing. thing i know i think for me it's honestly um because obviously i've been following gary for a while and i've always kind of felt that side of it but you bringing up that point today he said um why do they called um patients why do they call sick people patients because they're patient right and i, I think for now once you said that which we'll get into in a second that really resonated with me because me being young, it's like you got to be angry and aggressive and just keep going and push hard towards it. And you can't be too patient because, I mean, time is the only thing you've got. And if you're not. It's a thousand percent, dude. I mean, like Gary tells people to be patient, you know, and what I think he means, because if me and him sat down and chopped it up, I'm sure we agree on a lot of shit. Yeah. But but when he tells people to be patient, man, that's dangerous. Patience can kill you, bro. I mean, it yep. almost killed me. It almost killed my son with literal freaking i could tell you stories where it's literally I, I if my parents would have had patience i would be dead um or i would still be dead because i actually freaking died from it um and then my son would have been dead if we would have had patience patience isn't a good thing to have it literally means that you can experience delay trouble and challenge without being upset why would anyone want that ability like if i if i get delayed why would i want to not be upset yeah listen You want to get upset. You want to be pissed off. You aren't where you want to be. You want to get pissed off. You don't have what you want to have. You're not providing your family with what you're trying to provide your family with. You should not relax and, 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 and like be calm about it. You should be pissed off about it, which is not patient by definition. Now realizing that shit takes time 
dude, totally makes sense. And I think that's really what Gary's trying to tell people is, bro, shit takes time. Yeah, yeah. When shit does take time, you can't expect to be a billionaire overnight. But I wouldn't rest or be calm one minute the entire time if that was my goal. Yep. You need to get on fire. You need to freaking go after it. You need to make more noise, take more action, and get more and more animated every second you don't have what you want. So yep. being patient is the opposite of that. Being patient is calm down, relax, don't get <laughs> don't get upset, just chill. Things take time. Things will come when they come. Fuck that. Oh yeah, you're yeah, 18. So I got I, I got your side. I, I, I shouldn't even cuss around <laughs> you. No, it's I, I, my podcast is expl- like we're good to go. So so Gary, if you're listening to your if you're supporting your boy and listening to this podcast, man hit me up i'd love to have you on drop bombs and by the way it wouldn't be to argue with you because like i i love gary and i love his hustle but sometimes you're you're preaching the wrong gospel and to have patience is not healthy so anybody out there that's sitting there thinking i love gary v fuck you brad no (laughs) fuck you he's wrong and if he was on the show, I'll bet you 50 bucks he would say, I agree with you because he does want you to hustle and grind and and kick some ass or he wouldn't be showing you how to go make $8 on a stuffed teddy bear. But he's also saying have patience and he doesn't realize that people, people think that means, you know, relax, calm down. Things take time. Hey, listen, being aware of things take time is cool. Things do take time. But you shouldn't relax and you shouldn't not get upset. You should be animated more and more every day. You're not reaching your goal. And the funny thing is, is think about the first person that said have patience. It's probably somebody telling their freaking half talented kid that's sitting there whining about not getting something they want yep. to relax. Things take time. Be patient. No, fuck that. You know what I tell my kid? Do more than you're doing now. Work harder than you're doing now. Get more pissed off. Like freaking charge, demand, scream and yell. Do whatever you have to do and freaking keep doing it until you get what you want. And if that takes 20 years, be mindful. Shit might take some time. But do not relax. Do not be calm. And do not be patient. Freaking charge. That's why the rhinos in the the room, you said, what's with the rhinos? freaking charge bro like life is short man if you i tried being patient like before i knew what i knew now dude i i i was raised with have patience be patient yep. you know and so when i spent 10 years trying to build my business i was being patient i'm like you know things take time it'll come <laughs> you know hey that's okay that's okay things take time no 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 we re, you know relax and then finally i got pissed and i'm like fuck this like it's been ten freaking years, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm done with this <laughs> How long shit. Will patients keep going. <laughs> yeah, so I so I so I got pissed and I started making more calls and closing more deals and demanding more time and taking more action and I was pissed and I've stayed pissed. Within a year, boom, first million. Yep. Then boom, second million. Then third. Then fourth. And it's like, holy shit, dude. Patience is one of those bullshit things you do not want in your life. Mofo. Now listen, you've you've heard drop bombs yep, once yep. or never? No, I've heard it a bunch of times. Okay, so you know the whole bomb drop yep. is telling people to bomb pay squad. attention. So you being eighteen, I always say, look, what what can an eighteen year old teach you? Well, that's a naive thing for people to think because eighteen year olds can teach you a lot. I keep telling people I learn from all kinds of people. I don't care what age you are. Younger people most people will say, what the fuck do you know, bro? You're 18, yeah. dude. You just learned to wipe your ass, <laughs> right? Your nuts haven't yeah, yeah. even dropped yet. <laughs> like, dude, you're just starting to get pubes. What, what can you tell me? Well, dude, if you guys are listening to people of the younger nature, they can tell you how to fucking leverage social media. They can tell you how to operate equipment that you, you, haven't, you don't even know what it is. They can tell you what words are and how to speak to, you're not even millennial. Gen Z. Yeah, you're Z. So like they can teach you how to talk Gen Z, tell you what people are looking for, tell you how to change your business to adapt to the generation that's just coming up. Everyone's all millennial, millennial. Dude, the millennials are about to be old fuckers too. Okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's Gen Z. Yep. Now it's the, now that's the kids. Yep. So who's out there talking about Gen Z? Nobody. Well, they're about to be. 
because Gen Z is about to be the next wave of consumers. Well, why wouldn't you want to talk to someone young to learn about them? People are stupid, dude. Yeah, do you ever truth. get do you ever get discounted? Like, oh, dude, you're a you're a fuck punk kid. Yeah, I, mean, I think especially because I mean I've been building my brand now for like three years since I was 15 and got injured playing football. And right when I I would say like got into this whole social media space, it's always been like a all right, how can I be perceived as someone that's actually credible and knows what the hell they're talking about? And I think the last I would say 12 months have been a, a curve for me when it comes to starting the podcast and now collaborating with different people that have established not even their business, but their brand online, where when it comes to now if people see me on social media, they see the people I'm sitting down with, they see the people that I'm having conversations with. So I think that I would say collaboration effort has gained respect to people that are sitting down with me and having conversations with me. Yeah. But going to the point of like discounted, I, I think it's always going to be a struggle with people that are 16 to 20 if they're talking to older people, but it comes down to the conversations you have and how to prove yourself. It's like, you're not shit until you prove yourself, you know? And I feel like that goes for anyone that's in, in this 18 to 20 year old range of like, all right, you're young and you may know a couple things, but until you can prove yourself, like people should discount you. They should perceive you as someone that may not know what the hell they're talking about until you prove them wrong. And that's the mentality I go into every conversation with is like, how can I prove myself and be different from the other people they might think are discounted? Come on, man. See, that's how you get her done, son. What's the, what, like people always ask me, you know, ask me some questions. And I'm like, I don't know what questions you want me to ask you, but like, do you think the skulls of my enemies are dishwasher safe? What's that mean? Now, what that means, okay. folks, what that what that <laughs> means is, what, what do you think about like collaboration and relationships? My are thoughts they, on are it? they important? Yeah, for for me, that's everything. Because I mean, kind of a little bit about my story is like grew up in a small town in Virginia. And none of my family's entrepreneur at all. They've been all working jobs for the last twenty years. I have two older brothers work at a restaurant. Where where where? Virginia, okay. near Richmond. And like for me, the collaboration aspect came once I jumped into this whole social media space. And I would say really when it comes to building a personal brand and the way that I kind of got introduced to all I'm doing now. So you may know, you know Ty Lopez? Yeah. So Ty, when I was 16, I went through one of his um, programs, social media, just learning a lot of stuff. He ended up flying me out to LA, first time I was ever in LA. And he kind of just opened my mind to like, all right, what the hell is possible with social media? And that was like sort of my first big, I would consider it collaboration looking back. And since that time of I, I met Ty, he kind of put me and promoted me on social media. I got a little audience then. This was the beginning of 2017. Ever since that point, I was literally going out to LA to meet with influencers and meet with people that are having events and collaborating and networking. And literally over the last 18 months, it's been a huge turnaround I would say pivot point for me just because of the fact that I've been collaborating with people from an audience standpoint. Yep. But then for me, even with my podcast, like I don't monetize, I'm not running ads with it, but I monetize the back end with relationships. And that's always been a big pillar for me is I, I read the book, um, how to win friends, to influence people. And it's huge. always, yeah, it, it's always been a huge, just, that's the way I think, meaning I want to build a relationship with someone before I can do business. I want to make a friend before I actually know what they do. I want to know what's their why, right? Like understanding who someone is from a relationship standpoint, that's always been huge for me. So for me, building relationships is the reason why I'm putting out content on social media, right? So who taught you all this? I think um, someone that was really a dominant teacher of mine, definitely Gary Vee. So I read his book, Crush It. Yeah, see, so I agree a thousand percent with Gary Vee when it comes to that. Yep. I, I say relationships are the new economy. Yep, for sure. You know, at the end of the day, dude, he's he's guided you well, young Obi-Wan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, that's, for sure. most people don't understand it, dude. They just want to close you. They just want to sell you something. They just want to freaking do that. And it's like, dude, first build a relationship. Yep. You build a relationship. People like buying from people they like. You know, if I, if, if five of you guys do click funnels and I like you, I'm going to let, I'm going to, I would rather do my shit with you. Now, if you suck, I will pick someone else. But yep. if you're all equal and you know, it's, it is what it is. I'm going to pick the people I like. Wouldn't you? Yep. 100%. Yeah, so at the end of the day, man, relationships are powerful. Gary's whole, you know, jab, jab, right hook, or was it yep. hook, hook, jab, jab, right? Jab, right yeah. hook. Yeah. So that whole deal. 
all he's saying, man, is why don't you give some value a couple times before you ask for some money? Yep. Isn't that what that's about? Yeah. It's especially, it's like putting out content on social and giving value and then asking for something, not forcing it down their throat saying, bye, 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 but just giving value to the point where you put out something and people buy it based on the value that you've already given to them, you know? Yeah. So, why don't Gary and GC get along? It's funny. I actually, I watched a, I think it was an interview when Gary went to his office. Yeah, I watched it. It was hilarious. And but, I, but what, what's their, what's their problem? Because Grant gives value. Yeah. Grant gives a lot of free shit out too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So why is Gary like against the whole idea of selling content when, <sighs> when Gary sells for sure. books? Yeah, doesn't not, he? yeah, he sells books, the shoes, and then. Yeah, he, so why is it him and Grant butt heads so much? I'm not even, I, I would say in my opinion, um, it's funny because I, I think there's, it's two like different pillars of content on social where it's obviously like Gary doesn't have a course or a program, but he's monetizing the back end from people coming in and doing exactly. the live trainings with his team at VaynerMedia. And I think it's just two different approaches. But once I saw them kind of not an argument, but just debate in his, his studio, it, it made me kind of see it from two different parties. And I'm sure you would agree. Meaning like they both have good intentions. They both are great people at heart, but they just have different parallels of the way that you're, they're putting out content and monetizing the back end. When Gary is like monetizing the back end from his company standpoint and just trying to be like this Gary V individual who's built this brand but not selling anything. But when he puts out a shoe, he wants you to support it, right? It's not like buy my stuff, but it's, hey, support my stuff. I, I think it's just a different mindset, but what's yeah. your thoughts on that? The, well, there I mean, are differences. Kind of, but you know, Again, Grant gives out a lot of free shit yeah, too. hundred percent. But he also will sell you shit without an apology. I think Gary wants to do it more tactfully and almost as if, you know, hey, if you want it, there it is. Yep. And I wish you can support me. But, you know, so he does it different, but they're both doing the same For sure. thing at, at the end of the day. Totally. And that's why I'm always wondering, like, what's, what's the deal <laughs> there? And I don't know that they have an issue. I mean, I don't know if Grant has a problem or Gary has a problem. I've just heard, yep. which again, repeating rumors is stupid. There's a bomb. So I'm not even going to say that they do have a problem. All, I, all I'm wondering is what, what's the difference? One's doing it one way, one's doing yep. it the other, but they're both monetizing their shit period. And there's nothing wrong with monetizing your shit. Look, bro, if I can show you how to make a million dollars, why, why is it unfair for me to charge you? It's not, Exactly. It's like, <laughs> like that's dumb. This is not <laughs> like, dude. Hey, I can I can show you how you double your business. You can. Yeah, give me a thousand bucks. Oh, what a scammer, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna show you how to double your business. Well, show me how to double it, and then I'll and then I'll pay, dude. If you won't pay up front, shit, I yeah. ain't wasting my time. Yeah, yeah. But listen, I like Gary V. Grant Cardone has some good solid shit. But what they both need to understand, I believe, is, you know. You can't, well, let's use Gary, for example. He's going to tell people, give away your shit. I keep seeing it because I follow yeah. him. I watch him. Yeah, I like his stuff. I like his hustle. But he'll like lately he's been telling people to give it away. You know, give, 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 give. Well, dude, it's easy to say give when you got fucking millions of dollars. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What about when you're coming up and you can't afford to give? Yep. Like, dude, I need paid. I ain't giving shit. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got anything to give. <laughs> well, give, 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 then ask. How about just ask? Like, dude, listen, let me ask you a question. If I can double your business and accelerate how fast Build Your Empire reaches $100 million in revenue, would you give me ten grand All day, every yeah, day. Yeah, like, I don't need to <laughs> give you anything. I'm yeah. giving you a pitch. That's yeah. what I'm giving you. Yeah, like, yeah. here, here's my pitch. Now, yep. if, if I don't have credibility... And I have to give you something to earn credibility. If yep. I have to give you something to build enough trust, then by God, give. But I don't know if I believe the the whole Gary give, 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 give thing when you're coming up. I do believe it if you can afford to. Yep. Like, I'm not really trying to be an influencer. I, I just kind of got some shine from Grant. and I get shine from, you know, people. Not shine. What's the word? Like a little spotlight. Yeah. It, no, I'm thinking shade. Yeah, it's shine. Yeah, yeah. You're shining now. Yeah. Well, I'm getting a little shine from <laughs> these guys. And and you know, but at the end of the day, I'm not really trying to be an influencer. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I give. Yeah, you're putting out content. But if you came in here and said, Hey, you know, I need a system, well that that costs money, bro. Yeah. And I think Gary's message is a little bit confusing where entrepreneurs might think that they're supposed to give all this shit. 
right? And we're yeah. not talking about social media. Yep. You, you, I mean, you need to give on social media. Yeah. But what about your product? Can you sell that? Do you sell it? Yeah. Tell me about Build Your Empire. Yeah, so so Build Your Empire, it, it's cool how it came about. So the Do brand, you sell it? Yeah, we, so, we sell. So you're not taking old Uncle Gary's advice on that, are you? I mean, from a content angle, I think there's there's two different angles, but product wise, like yeah, we're gonna. So is that what he means? Is that what Gary's talking about? Content only. So I, I think he, he means it in two ways. One is the content, which everyone does, obviously. When you're but giving out content, but who sell? I, I've never been on an Instagram page that I had to pay ninety nine cents to get exactly, the content. Exactly. So everyone's giving that shit. Away. Yeah, for sure. So for what's sure. he talking about then? It's weird because I mean his his thing is like obviously like people pay him hundreds of thousands of dollars to all do the day, marketing every, every all day yeah all day dude every he day, won't he won't come you know? talk to you if, unless you give him seventy five G's yeah literally okay yeah. so he ain't giving that away yeah, what yeah. the fuck is he giving away I, I think his his posts <laughs> like dude uh, yeah, everybody I, I gives away their posts yeah I think his his thing is just <laughs> Shit, the abundance like, of posts <laughs> yeah but dude guess what that's also his freaking strategy yeah you know. You have to you have to put that content out there to get recognition, to get people to know, like, and trust you. So that's an investment. Yep. He's investing. He ain't giving the shit away. Like, there's no return on this. Yep. Bullshit. Yeah, this definitely is. Yeah. See, that's why I want him here in the studio. Okay, we'll Just get him here. Because you know what? He's a real dude like me, and I love that. So this won't offend him. We'll just have a freaking discussion. He can either change my mind or I'll change his. Yep. That'd be freaking hey, fun. Gary will be here for sure. <laughs> well, dude, that's why I like Gary because Gary keeps the shit real and he doesn't really care what you think of him. And that, my yep. friend, is what everybody should learn. Like, if you guys want to learn something from Gary V, it ain't fucking how to find a goddamn beanie baby at a garage sale and make three bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That blows my mind, too. It's like, oh, doesn't yeah. he have he better shit that. to do? He hustles know, that like, shit. <laughs> oh, damn, dude, he's got better shit to do, doesn't yeah, yeah. he? Like, dude, how you got, how you find time to go on a garage sale so you can make 280 bucks on a Saturday in two hours? Now, if he's doing it to show people, stop making excuses. You can go to garage sales and make a couple hundred bucks a day. Like, stop bullshitting yourself. Yep. Cool. Then I respect that and I like it. But that should only last a couple seasons yeah. or, or days, I mean. Like, it's... A, it looks like he just really has fun doing it. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, that's like his story in a sense of he started the baseball card shit. And he yeah, was, but dude, you ain't got nothing better to do. Yeah. Like I don't give a fuck. You, I could see a beanie baby for ten, knowing full well it'll sell on eBay for thirty, but it'll take me twenty minutes to go find it and post it. I got better shit to do. Yeah, I'll make way more than twenty bucks not selling the beanie baby. Yeah, for sure. I I think for him it's like majority of his demographic and audience is like those people that a couple hundred bucks a day for three weekends would fucking change their life, right? So, yeah. Well, if he's doing it for that, that's I, what I, I think I they're admire. doing it for. That's that's where I from my like someone that's eighteen that's following him. I think one hundred percent that's the way he's doing it is like yeah. to and doing it consistently just so people is like shit like Gary's doing this every weekend why can't I why am I not making exactly. excuses I, I think that's why yeah the reason he's well doing then it. I won't see it for very long because he, he can replay that same content right and yep, people yep. still get the message but yep. if I see it two years from now he's still doing that trash talk <laughs> I'm gonna be like fucking Gary's addicted <laughs> which funny because Grant's addicted okay. Grant's addicted to, to negotiating and selling. Yep. Like he's addicted to it. He's obsessed with it. Read his book. What was it? Obsessed? Obsessed to be average. Or, yeah. yeah. Yep. I've read that one. Yeah. So he's addicted. Sounds like Gary's addicted to garage sailing. Yeah. <laughs> what are you addicted to? Dude, I'm not really addicted to anything. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I Nothing. Nothing? Nah. Okay. Nah. I'm addicted to nothing. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm just average. I'm just your normal <laughs> Joe. I, I wouldn't say that. I'm not obsessed about anything. And so again, maybe I'm just average. Grant says be obsessed or be average. Yep. Well, I guess I'm fucking average because <laughs> I'm not really obsessed. Okay. But I always look up definitions, man. You got a freaking word you don't understand. You have to look it up. Now, if you look up the, the definition of obsessed, what does it say? I don't even know the exact definition. You got your phone? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll Google it. But, you know, what am I passionate about? I like a, maybe passionate and obsessed is the same thing. I don't know. So here's the question. So what's Build Your Empire do? You're going to teach me what? Yeah, so so Build Your Empire, this has been something that I've really been focused on the last eight months. So me and two of my partners, we actually acquired the brand. It's been a brand on Instagram mainly. We have 1.4 million followers, and we acquired that whole entity back in February of this year. You bought it? Yeah, we bought the whole brand. 
Dang. <laughs> so um, our, our main intent with buying is like seeing a brand build your empire. Our, it, it comes down to two major things that we want to change, education and networking. Those are something that someone that's just coming from public school, they don't teach jack shit about the real way that you can become successful. They teach you the, the math, the science, but for, for an entrepreneur at least, they don't have the tactics and the skills that you need to level up in a sense. So with Build Your Empire, our, our main thing, and we actually just opened up our entrepreneur incubator down in um, Scottsdale, Arizona, and we call it the Build Your Empire House. And we just had our Build Your Empire grand opening event to kind of kick things off. But our main core pillars of what we do and what we sell, number one is we ha we're having the events. We have one every quarter, smaller 150 to 200 people events at the Build Your Empire House. And then on the back end, we have our educational platforms, that, which is teaching people and bringing mentors to the table within the Build Your Empire community and making a cult-like community. And we like to call them the Empire Builders. So right now we have the private Facebook group and we're, we're kind of creating this and cultivating this community that can come to the empire house we'd like to call it once a month for these masterminds to really build community from that but um our, our biggest thing right now is just kind of doing the whole rebrand process yes so it's there. like it's like a real world yeah yeah it was well, me and four other young entrepreneurs anthony the content guy he's coming from kansas city and then kieran he um he has his whole automotive agency and the biggest thing we don't want it to be is all these guys just coming in to work for us our biggest thing is all the people here that are living at the house, me, Anthony, Tristan, and Kieran, they all have their own businesses and they're all doing their own things, but they're contributing to the Build Your Empire brand, right? So are you, are you familiar with Jake Paul at all? Yeah. So he has Team 10, right? I like to kind of simplify it and be like, this is the Team 10 of entrepreneurships, entrepreneurship, but we're not signing 20% of your career and taking everything you have. It's more of like you're building your own brand, you're building your own business, you're building your own empire, but you're contributing to the brand. And the end goal with it is to then open up Build Your Empire Houses all over the U.S. We're starting one in Scottsdale, which we live at. Um, that huge shout out to my business partners, John Malott and Josh Denny. You don't, you don't, but you don't want no 49-year-old dude hanging out there. <laughs> So here's the thing. And the biggest way I want to kind of bridge the gaps, because like you said, where people discount the 18 to 20 year olds when it comes to knowledge. So for me, if I just had this brand by myself, people may look at it and have a different perception of it. Both my business partners, they've been business partners for the last 20 years together. They're both in their 40s. So they bring the credibility to the table of continuous success. And they Are they have, at the house though? Um, no, they aren't living at the house. Josh, he's back and forth to California, but they are the people that are bringing credibility to the brand. And the reason why I had Cole Hatter, Dave Meltzer, and all these guys speak at the event is because if I, if I have an event with just 18 to 20-year-olds that are killing it, they've been making money for a year, it doesn't appeal to a crowd that has had a continuous amount of success. I mean, yes, they can learn something, but the reason I'm bringing in the people that have dominated and actually built an, empo built an empire like Cole Hatter is just bringing credibility and legitimacy to the brand, and that's yep. the way I want to... That's really the way I'm positioning it. But the Build Your Empire House is we want to have one in LA, one in Vegas, one in San Francisco, Miami, New York, and really create an experience where you can be a part of something that is brought together by like-minded people. And we provide you with the systems, mentors, and guidance to actually build your empire, bringing in, build your real estate empire courses, build your social media empire, build your crypto empire, build your fitness empire, and bring this whole education um, just platform together that's actually legit and you can l really learn from real people and then also doing that from a live experience standpoint from the events. So you don't have any courses based on those things? Not not complete set courses now, but um, right. we're at the Lightspeed VT office. Shout out to Brad and uh, we're, we're chatting about some things. <laughs> yeah, but why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, that, that's definitely the one the direction we want to move in. And yeah, you well, you almost have to, dude. Like, I can't come to your event once and master something. Yep. I can be exposed to it. Right. I can pick yep. up a few things, but then I go back home and I tinker with it. And I'm like, you exposed me to some information and some people. Yep. Well, how do I go deeper with Cole Hatter? How do I go deeper with Dave? You know, I am going to need access to him. Well, they're going back to their lives. So now basically they go away. And what do I do? I go fumble and, you know, mess, mess shit up for a while until yep. I get good at it. Now, if you were to have those people available to go, back with your attendees and spend 30, 60, 90 straight days going over things with repetition, letting them practice, holding them accountable to it. Dude, in 90 days from, from that day, doing it that way, you would have rock star testimonials, yep. rock star testimonials, because it'll be like, people will be like, holy shit, yep. this worked. And you know what the credit will be? You know who should get the credit? Me. <laughs> interactive learning baby yeah light speed don't give no credit to cole and dave and all your experts <laughs> fuck them no just joking it's it's a combination of 
subject matter expertise and proper application of learning. To learn, you need good content, right? Yep. Because if you teach someone effectively to do it wrong, they'll do it wrong. Yep. So you got to have the good content. That's the Cole, the Dave, the your shit. You teach your own shit. Yeah, too, don't personal you? branding, social media growth, all that sort of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, so you got to start with the good shit yep. that, that's actually good. Okay, so you're providing that at the house, but what happens when I leave? I don't have the repetition. So yep. you have to have repetition. You have to have accountability, and you have to have practice and role play application, right? Yep. If you want to really master something, first you learn it, which involves those four things. Then you freaking practice it. Then you teach it. When you start teaching it, you really become an expert. Yep. At, well, at least on what you've learned. So take a look at the military. If if what I'm saying is not true, why can't I just? Why don't they just train soldiers one day at the bases and then send them out to war? <laughs> like I can tell you everything, dude. Here's an M16. Here's how you load it. There's yep. going to be people running. You shoot those people. Here's what their uniform looks like. When we say this or that, we want you to do this and that. Okay, everybody got it? Here's a manual. See you later. <laughs> I'll see ya. No, yep. dude. They train the fuck out of soldiers yep. because they could die. So they really train soldiers. Athletes, what do they do? Every day. Do they say, hey, here's how you shoot a free throw. Watch this game against the Lakers, and then let's go play them. <laughs> no, dude. They practice, drill, and rehearse every single day for long periods of time, yep. which is why they become elite and professional. There's no difference. When you're in school, why'd you learn your ABCs? Repetition. Exactly. How do you know happy birthday to you song? <laughs> we sing it a hundred times. <laughs> That's right. It's repetition. And when you listen to songs cruising down the road, you hear a song, like you know the song Taste? Yep. Can you, can you sing can you sing every word of it? Yeah. Okay, that's because you've heard it how many times? Like freaking hundreds. But the first time you heard it, you're like, I like that song. Yeah. That's being exposed. So when I yep. come to your event, bro, and I hear Cole, oh, I like this song. But I don't know the song. If I want to learn that song, I need to have some repetition. Yep. Then if I want to master that song, I need to practice. Right? And then I need accountability. Someone needs to track, measure, monitor, and make sure I'm doing what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And then boom, boys. And girls, Moms. boys and girls, you just got yourself an actual training program. And the difference between training and going to an event is the difference between making a thousand and making a hundred million. It's massively different. And so if you guys go to your build your empire event, which I highly recommend you do, cause I hear they're great. Yeah, haven't been one to myself. We got to get you speaking at one. How can we make that happen? Well, when I make a billion, when I got something to speak about, bro, I don't have much to say, but. Brush your teeth. That's I can, the one thing I got to Well, you need to brush your fucking teeth. That's yeah. for sure. But, dude, at the end of the day, that's not all I say, by the way. It's funny. It's funny, too. I heard him at 10X, and that's the biggest takeaway I got. And we got the little the it, Listerine. Dude, it's funny because the, the biggest takeaway everyone got was brush your teeth, which is a good takeaway because people don't understand, man. You got bad breath. You're talking to someone that could make a decision based on you. I don't, I can't remember anyone whose breath smelled and I did business with them. <laughs> Like when I, when I'm sitting there talking and I can't stand their breath, I freaking I can't think of nothing but get away yeah. from them. So that's just some legit business advice that nobody gives you. You know yep. why? They want to give you some fluffy cliche bullshit that doesn't fucking matter. Yep. Like, you know, hey, you can do it. Just believe in yourself. <laughs> okay, well, how do I do that, dickhead? Like it's easy to say believe in yourself, but yep. actually get me to believe in myself. It's not just tell me to believe in myself. Otherwise, I could say, dude, you want to be rich? Be confident and very persuasive. <laughs> All right, buddy. John. See you later. <laughs> I gave you the secrets. Yep. You owe me a thousand. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I got to show you these things and I got to work with you and practice and show you and practice and show you. Then you get become a master. But um, shit, where was I going with that? Um, what was What did I say right before that? I had a damn good point, but I was babbling and forgot. Oh, yeah, brush your teeth. Yep. Listen, I also said, if you were listening, but after I said brush your teeth, everyone was laughing, and then they couldn't believe it. And then I said, I, my mom, and then I said my mom kept humping. Did you hear that yep, part? Yep. Or were you one of the ones that uh, walked out? No, I was in your suite up top. Oh. So it's like, you know, I told them, you know, my mom kept humping, and I seen somebody look over, and they're like, did he just say his mom kept humping? So they're, they're thinking it's funny, but they're not paying attention because the, the shit, the lessons I gave is simple. You want to make more, do more, right? Yep. I mean, that's that simple, but it's the truth, bro. Anybody listening to this podcast right now, you want to make more than you're making now, do more than you're doing now. 
like that's it's fucking a bomb. gold. It's gold, <laughs> but but people think, well, yeah, no, no kidding. Well, yeah, but dude, it's that easy. Quit making it harder than it is, especially when it comes to sales or building an empire. Let's say you guys have how many people coming to your events? Around two hundred. Okay, so you want four hundred to come? Yes. Okay, well then call more motherfuckers than you did last time. Yep. Spend more advertising and do more than you did last yep. time. And guess what? You'll go, holy shit, 400 this time. Yep. And then you're going to do more and you're going to do more. You think Grant started out getting 10,000 people at that event? I was at his very first one. How many do you think there's been? People uh, say two. Three, what, 10X three? growth cons? Yeah. Or? yeah. Shoot, People I mean, say three's coming up yeah, in Miami. Yeah, I mean, I, he's branding it like three. 35,000. Growth con three. That's growth con four for, for okay. all the people that don't know. Growth okay. con one was in Mexico. Really? Okay, I was there too. And there was maybe 100 people there. Really? What part yeah. of Mexico? Uh, I believe it was Cancun. Okay. So, yeah, it was Cancun. Okay. So we went down there. I didn't there. hear about that one. Yeah, well, <laughs> no one did. But again, that's where he started it. And then, okay. boom, he did it again bigger. And he did it again bigger. You know why? Because Grant is, is, is he owns Do More. Like, yep. he doesn't stop. Tony Robbins, too, by the way. So when I say Do More... And get better if you want to make more money. It it blows over people's heads because it's so freaking simple. Yep. And people think there's some rocket science answer to everything. There's not. Like you went to you you did a Ty Lopez thing. You listen to him. Next thing you know, he's coaching you and he's mentoring you. Next thing you know, you're there. Next thing you know, you're doing your personal brand. Dude, you're just doing the shit, right? Yeah. There's no magic in what we're doing, nope. is there? Not at all. Yeah, like, are you the only person on earth that can do what you did? <laughs> Absolutely not. As Everyone, anyone can do it. <laughs> anyone can do it. And that's what I don't understand is, like, people don't realize, oh, I'm stuck. They're dude, not doing anything. Dude, how the fuck are you stuck? Like, why don't, what do you, I've asked somebody, oh, you're stuck? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, tell me about your day. What what, what time do you get up? I get up between maybe eight and nine. I'm like, eight and fucking nine? Bro, get up earlier. <laughs> You what know, time do you get up? I get up like 4.30 or 5. Okay. But I wake up when I wake up. I don't set an alarm. It's just when my body's out enough sleep, pop out my eyes. Like today I woke up like at 7. Okay. But I was up all night watching Ozark. Okay. You ever seen that? Uh-uh. It's freaking bad. Ozark? What's Ozark? Ozark. Show on Netflix. But anyway, so do more. And then the next one I said was get better. Yep. Right? Get better. <clears throat> get better, bitches. What's get better mean? Practice, drill, rehearse, yep. practice, Repetition. drill, rehearse, you know, compete. I'm not compete, by the way. I totally I'm against competing with people. It's it's I'm not against it. I just don't believe in it. Okay. I believe do you believe in it? Competing? Yeah. I, I mean I've always heard the thing like um competition is always the right thing. Like competition's good, but let me hear your standpoint of it. Maybe you'll change my mind. Well, so you believe in competition. I mean, I think at this point from a like athletic standpoint, you're competing with an Yeah, we're not team. talking about games, bro. We're talking about fucking life. Okay. We're not talking about games. Okay. I compete in a game. Yeah. Like yeah, we're yeah. we're there to okay, we're there yeah, to compete. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm not talking about I don't believe in competing. <laughs> I was a like, competition. I'm, talk, I'm talking about like if me and you were gonna do business and you're building your empire and I'm gonna do build your dreams. Okay. I wouldn't compete with you. I would collaborate yes. and I would contribute more to the universe that way. I will create things, right? Yep. I'm not competing with you. I'm creating things. Yep. And then I'm going to ask you, do you want to create some more things? So the more you create in the universe, the more universe has, right? The more abundance there is. Yep. So when you create, you're, you're producing more of something. When you compete, right? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm I agree taking with your customers. I'm not producing more customers. Yep. You know, I'd rather compete. I mean, I'd rather collaborate and create than, yes. than compete. And you hear a lot of these people are like, you know, compete, dominate, <laughs> fuck them up, yeah, yeah, yeah. tear their throats out. Dude, I ain't tearing their throats out. Like, oh, I'm going to produce and create and collaborate. You'll end up, in my opinion, winning yep. that way. What's your thoughts? That's a bomb. No, I, I, that's right on the hammer. I was thinking about it from an athletic standpoint. And sort of like when it comes to just from a social media perspective that I always talk about, like collaboration. Like why would I try to compete with Grant, right? Why not just collaborate? Let's get him on my podcast. Yeah. He'll promote me. I'll promote him. I think it goes back to the basic of like collaboration will help both people win in their own way. There you go. So, I mean, collaboration is the only way. So See? that's what I would say. See? Dude, I'm, your, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like your fucking mentor. Right? Dude, Literally. Obsessed. 
It literally means preoccupy or fill the mind of someone continually, intrusively, and to a troubling extent. Troubling? Yeah. So, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not obsessed. I don't okay. want to be obsessed. Then I'm thinking, well, maybe it means like, you know, fill your mind continually with success. Well, no, it says to a troubling extent. It's not troubling. Then, then of this one, be preoccupied, preoccupied with or constantly worrying about something. So maybe that's what he means. Be, okay. be constantly preoccupied with success. I, I would say in that case, I'm, I'm obsessed. So I'd be obsessed okay. in that definition of, of reaching a billion dollars. Okay. And it's not really a billion dollars I want to reach. I just know that money is a measuring stick for talent. Yep. If you're really, really good and talented and contributing a lot of value, you're going to have money. You can't provide that much value and not get paid, which is why I always tell people you're worth what you get. Because if you're not getting paid, then you're not providing anybody any value. If yep. I could show you how to make a billion dollars, would you pay me? All day. So would everybody. So if I was showing everybody how to make billions of dollars, dude, I'd get paid. Yeah. The problem is, is I'm not providing that value. Most people's value of themselves is false. And they think they're valuable and they're not valuable. So pay attention. How do you get valuable? You, you, you solve problems. And what do yep. most people do? They run from problems. Yep. Most people don't want to find them. I, I bought the URL, lookforproblems.com, <laughs> because that's really the key to getting successful is because yep. you're, you're, you become excellent problem solver. So look at my social media and say what I should do. Okay, let me see like, what should I do? Let me see. Coach me, mentor, Let's get the, it. mentor the, the old man. It's funny. Cause I know that, um, I started following you after uh 10 X and that's when I really started following your journey and on social. Did you go like, man, this guy's fucking fucking up. Now your content's good as hell. There's a lot of people that they just, they aren't consistent with it. They don't have a good message. And I listen to your podcast and, all day. Um, what what about my posts? No, I, so let me look. So I'm looking at it from a, so this is what I always say. And I, I talk about the three pillars, right? So when I talk about, if you go to someone's Instagram bio, what's the first thing you instantly know? What's the first thing you instantly see and perceive them as obviously yours CEO of Lightspeed instantly gives you who you are, what you do and kind of what kind of value are you giving out? So I would say from, if I was analyzing from a bio perspective, CEO of Lightspeed, host of dropping bonds, dropping bombs meaning you instantly know he has a podcast or some sort of show ceo of lightspeed and then at the end of the day entrepreneur so i, I would give big check off the box of the bio because I, I always think that's the more most important thing because someone that's 18 to 25 that's, should, I, should i change that though no i think that's good okay go i think that's on point um from an angle of seo on instagram being verified will always rank you higher you so know that's right so you're you're on point from that perspective dude and verified <laughs> now now people can say who cares this is usually people without the check mark when i got that some bitch i was walking around the office going acting like i was <laughs> like my keys were missing i'm like dude have you guys seen a blue check mark and i'm like oh there it is <laughs> oh my god there it is i walk okay. into an office they're sitting there i'm looking around they're like what'd you lose looking for this blue check mark. <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> when did you get it when did you get it i don't know it's been a minute okay but, but no, i remember because i remember i followed you i think i'm not sure if you had it or not but it's from an seo angle it's just instant credibility and that's something like from a personal branding aspect like it should be everyone's end goal just I, it, to dude i perceive. don't it's hard as hell to get though yeah i got mine january 2nd of this year if you know somebody it's a hard ass game. It's still I, you know, hard. Yeah, you talked to Dan Fleshman about it at all? Yeah. Because um, when, at my event that we just had the grand opening, someone literally raised their hand and was like, "How the hell do you get verified?" And I was like, "Let me." Dan was right in front of me. I was like, "Yo, everyone, just Dan Fleshman right here. He's about to come up next. Just listen to his perspective." And he's like, "It's honestly really about who you know, obviously, but getting the right SEO on Google." Because here's what Instagram does: they'll literally look up who you are on Google and see, all right, what comes up if I look up this dude? Because it's not about how famous you are or how much money you have. It's about the strategic positioning of how can someone be a trouble to your individual rights to the content? Like how can someone do harm to your brand or, or be confused about by you, other people? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's why you always see some people going verify me, look at this fake account, yeah. which is funny because most of them are making their own. Fake <laughs> accounts. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I like, would say like, dude, no one's ever been a fake Bradley ever, except once when it started on Twitter. Okay. But like I don't see a bunch of fake Bradley accounts. Is there a bunch of fake Bradley like, accounts? Like, dude, if I'm getting people making fake accounts saying they're me, that's in my opinion, cool. That means now you're getting you got, somebody. You got team Bradley. Yeah. But that's somebody. That's a probably, team. Yeah, Bradley that's, motivation. Uh, These are good ones. 
Yeah, but those are like I haven't even seen those. Which yeah. ones are they? But there's no one trying to act yeah, like Yeah, no one's trying me. to act like you. Not at all. See, come on, man. So <laughs> someone says, you know, well, that's what you do. You go make a bunch of you, yeah, you that's go not make the... a bunch of fake accounts and then they'll verify you. Not Dude, the, that doesn't work. Not the move. I've seen people do it and that's it did, they're not verified. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Then I know people with a bunch of money. They bet me a thousand dollars. They'd be verified within three months, and I'm like, dude, it's pretty hard. Oh, dude, three months guaranteed. <laughs> dude, it's been like a year. Okay. <laughs> they can't get verified. How'd you get verified? So, um, just the right connections at the right time. And for me, it was, so I um, this is something to help me. So, getting credible links, obviously. So, I pu- I did a self published book on Amazon podcasts on iTunes. Those are all credible pieces of information that give credibility to your name. And then, like, getting obviously like featured in different articles on Entrepreneur Forbes, like getting something tangible information that if someone can you help people get verified i always say no because it's not there's no definite guarantee right if i'm solving a problem i want to know that i can solve it so if this is someone's problem they can't get verified i can't do it 100 because even from building i can do it hit up brad everyone no i can guarantee you verified how much money you got (laughs) 100 percent verified okay you want me to tell you how right now yep this will work every time you take i don't know a million or two, you go to Hollywood and you make yourself a movie that gets distribution. Period. Yep. You come out with your own movie, you will be verified. Yeah. Okay, that's all. It- or go get your own TV show on a yep. network that'll get you verified. Yep. Um, or go practice your ass off and join a professional uh, team. Yep. Now we just met this guy from ASU. Even like college athletes now, they're getting verified all day. Right. So go day. be somebody. Yeah. That's how you do it. And yeah. guess what? If you have that much money where you're willing to pay to be verified, invest in yourself, become something better than you are, and you will get verified. Yeah. That, my That's friend, a bomb. is the verified guarantee. <laughs> you want to be verified? Get better. Yeah. Go go invest in yourself. Quit looking for someone to hand 10 grand to, to sneak some yeah. side money to an Instagram 100%. employee. 100%. And by the way, I've heard that happens too. So. Yeah, that, that's why Instagram released a, like, you can submit through Instagram now in the back end, but I don't know anyone that's gotten, like, submitted and got accepted from Instagram back end, because you can submit right on the app now, but they did that just to kind of... Pacify? To, like, just make it like, all right, guys, you can actually submit here, because it's a whole black market of well, iPad. Well, if everybody starts getting verified, then no one will care about being exactly. verified. Exactly. Like, it's verified's a, it's a almost... a scarcity thing. Yeah, but verified's almost like a freaking status symbol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 from a personal brand like, it's funny because every person my, my wife tells me I like when you comment I go why she goes <laughs> she goes because because you, you got a blue check mark and it <laughs> that's makes how me, it goes she goes it makes me look cool that's how, it's funny because I was talking about um with that to Gary I think it was and because I was in high school when I got verified right and everyone like perceives that as like celebrity status because like if, if you have a hundred followers and you're verified, they won't even care about the number of followers from like a psychological standpoint of like younger or this young demo, like demographic. Like that's like the ultimate end goal from a personal branding. And I've actually, I've asked them a, a lot of people that I've interviewed like drama, Jay Shetty. And I'm like me reaching out to you being verified. Did that add any credibility to who I was for you to say yes to the interview? And all of them said yes. And I think for me, that's been a huge leverage standpoint of actually getting powerful people on the podcast is having that because it instantly adds credibility to your name from a personal branding standpoint. And I tell everyone that should definitely be an end goal because you get taken more seriously for sure. That's right. We're dropping bombs out here. We are. So let me ask you this. My bio's decent. Yep. Can you, can you improve it? Um, I think yes. Cause so, like, it, cause like CEO of Lightspeed, a lot of people never heard of that. Yep. So what does I, that mean? I think like it's it, it, CEO of Nike. Okay. That means something. <laughs> okay. CEO yeah, of yeah. Apple. Okay. But CEO of Lightspeed, they don't know what that means. I, I think you could do something with Lightspeed, like defining it in one sentence. I think cause for me, it's like, I want people to instantly know when they go to my page that I interview successful entrepreneurs. That's the way I'm really building my brand right now. So the first thing you see when you go to my bio is just, I interview world-class entrepreneurs. So it's like a statement that will instantly just like slim down who I am and how I want you to really perceive me in a way. So I I think one thing emojis could do something as well. Like it just, it highlights to the experience of the bio. So adding emojis, it could definitely, um, so what would you do? Tell me, I'll do it. All right, let's see. And I don't like, like, I don't want to look like a cheese ball. Yeah, for sure. I already do a good enough job of that by myself. <laughs> I think, 
Sea of Lightspeed, I think you have that because you. I think you can fit more text in there. So instead of saying just entrepreneur, I would put the meaning of Lightspeed, like what problem are you solving? Like if you could simplify it to one sentence, put that in the first line and then put CEO of Lightspeed right under that. I don't get it. Like give me an example. So for example, um, let's say build your empire. This is like for example that I'll do on the build your empire page. So um, our thing is about showcasing world-class entrepreneurs focus on creating impact, helping you build your empire. So it's pretty much giving you like, like show me how to post that. So is this a glitch in the, in the fucking matrix? <laughs> let's see. That won't post that thing I just did, but we'll see if old junior can figure it out. So, so how Let's much room back. do you have? It, it's going to look all ugly when I got big. Let's long see. You can, you can do, um, up to, I don't know if it's 140 characters or what, how do I, how do I get more followers, get more followers Did it work? for me? The biggest, yeah, it's broken. the biggest answer to that now I, for me is just collaboration because you'll get exposure, exposure followers from a mass perspective, so like, draft off everybody else. From an angle of collaboration, yes. Like, for example, if you Google my name on YouTube, it's me sitting down with Grant Cardone and it's like sit, sitting down with 17 year old Casey Adams. And that has brought me so much attention. I'll have people DM me all the time, like, yo, saw your interview with Grant because he posted it. And that collaboration, like, got me more real followers than any ad spend I could put on Instagram, right? Because, like, Grant sold me, the, the interview sold me. I didn't have to spend thousands of dollars saying, hey, my name's Casey Adams. I'm 18 years old. And people will drop thousands of dollars in ads but they won't even think about the collaboration and i think people need to tr like well, train dude, themselves how do you get how do you get these interviews with people how do you get grant to interview you because grant doesn't interview anybody unless he wants to yeah and b they're doing something yeah so for me and especially when i talk to young people or gary v yeah yeah like, who do you think's harder to get to gary or get or, or, or grant uh let me think i think for me I think Grant for sure all day. It's harder to get to. I, well, I think because here's why: because Gary, he's known for having little, quick five, ten minute meetings all day, every day. Where it's like I have a buddy that has hundred followers, and he asks Gary a question. He's like, "Come by the office." Like he's just he's open to that because that's his content. People coming in, people coming in. He's just giving them advice. So for Grant, I think he's not doing that as much as Gary is. As in like. And not anyone can just hit up Grant and he's like, yeah, come on the show, right? Sure you but, can. Sure you can. Go go to his office. He's right there every day. Yes, but I think from a reaching out standpoint of like, if you hit up Gary, someone from his team is obviously managing his Instagram. He'll definitely, like a majority of people can get sit down with Gary all day. That's just my experience because with Grant, it was more like a positioning for an interview um, like for me to do for my podcast, where if I was like, "Hey, um, Grant, I have a question. Like, let me come to the office, sit down with you for an hour, and chop it up." No. For me, it's interviews. He, yeah, but you got lucky because he wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, this this is a funny story too. So I, before I interviewed Grant, I'd never been to Miami before, and I'm, I was I was at this I was up in D.C. with my buddy Kieran, who's here at the office, and I DM Grant. I was like, "Yo, I'd love for you to be on my podcast." He's like, "Hit up my assistant. I forgot her name." But um, I was like, "Hey, I'll be in Miami next Thursday. Um, if if Grant's available to do the podcast, I usually do them on Skype. But since I'm there, I would love to do it in person." And I literally just made that up. I've never been to Miami. Never thought to go to Miami. Didn't have flights booked. I just kind of positioned it like that because I got that from his book. Like he. He already knew he was going to be in New York. He had this funny story, but I literally used this same tactic on him. And I was like, yeah, I'll be in Miami. He's like, cool. Sounds good. Next Thursday works. And I'm in school at the time when I interviewed him. So I have to like just miss school for the week. I missed like 60 no, days took, this year. You took action, bro. Exactly. And Most I people up, won't do that. Exactly. And it was like the pre-framing of saying I was going to be somewhere and then actually being there because he said yes to it. And I think for me, just using those sort of tactics has always been something that I go out of my way to do is to – get to the end goal of sitting down with someone and actually building a relationship and always collaborating. Like that's always my mindset for my brand and growth is it's not about. See, right now you're just trying to draft off the bomb squad. He wants, <laughs> he wants all the bomb squad to follow him. <laughs> Come on, bomb but, squad. But, yeah. But see, I collaborate. See, I want the yep. bomb squad to follow you. I want the bomb squad to follow and listen to and learn from everyone I bring on this show or I wouldn't have them on the show. Yep. And I don't even call it a show. It's more like a freaking conversation yep. it's just a podcast but you know i am filming them now so we can put them on youtube because obviously there's youtube peeps yep so what can i do to improve that page and and, and folks if you're listening he's going to tell you what you can do to improve your page don't when you say well your bio is pretty good well 
he's saying my bio is pretty good. It can be a little bit better, but look at your bio folks. If it doesn't freaking tell people who you are, what you do real quick, he's basically saying it needs yeah. to, because people are going to look at your bio and decide if they want to follow you. You're wondering why you can't get followers. Cause I go there and all it says is some dumb, long, stupid shit yeah. that doesn't tell me anything. For sure. So change your bio. What's next? What about posts? So posts here's, this is the most important thing that I talk to everyone about and it's called the three pillars. That's what I kind of narrow it down to. So when I say your three pillars of branding, this goes with your bio and with your content and it pretty much comes down to what are the three things you want people to really perceive you as. So if you go to my page, it's interviewing, networking, and traveling. Those are like the three types of content that no matter what I put out, it revolves around those three categories. And I think if you do more than three, people will start getting confused and they won't understand your message. Meaning, let's say we bring up Grant. He's sales and that's like an instant word you think about. When you think of Gary, people like to think of patience and like enjoying the what process. What do you think of mine? I think from yours I'm like, confusing them. No, I think from yours just like if I did not know who you are if I go to your page it, there may be some confusion if if it's not like a key word but for you like we talked about your your phrases that Joey Yak was putting in those songs I think highlighting those words and those phrases will help build a brand long term because it's rememberable like when I think of Grant I think 10x right like that's instant thought process so when I go to your page, uh, dropping bombs, I've listened to the podcast, I'm an avid follower of it, so that's what I think about. I, when I hear Brad Lee, I'm like, bomb squad, dropping bombs. Like That's just an instant brand correlation. Patience my ass. <laughs> is that, which one is that? Where's that at? It's about halfway down. Okay. Center, halfway down. Or not, not halfway, but a couple of thumbs down. Now your content's on point, honestly patience my ass see but the, the thing is with this is like look I, all i'm trying to do is is make posts that people can share and like so that's my only goal is like if you can't share what i'm posting maybe you shouldn't be following me because it's what i believe or i wouldn't be posting it yep so i'm trying to like help uh give knowledge to people whether and again i always i used to think well this is common sense shit but dude even the most common sense shit is not necessarily yeah well known it's like brushing your teeth yep like you, dude i gotta tell you to brush your teeth <laughs> but i do and yeah. that, and now dude i've seen people come up with braces dude i went and got braces because you you <laughs> no weren't at the, you weren't at this driven event but i told people dude if you got a fucked up set of teeth you probably shouldn't even be here like what are you doing spending money coming to these things when you got a fucked up grill and they literally left and went and got braces and fucking <laughs> implants and shit. Oh, my Lord. But, dude, I did him a favor because yeah. why are you spending money to go to some event where, A, you're not learning much anyway because those events are not for learning. Otherwise, <laughs> you'd want your money back because you didn't learn shit. Yeah. Those events are best for networking, building relationships and, and, and that. But you do pick some shit up. What they picked up was get your fucking teeth fixed. And I totally believe it. Why? Because when you walk up, dude, people are judging you. They're judging you. The yeah. second the second they see you, they're thinking, oh, this guy's sitting here saying he's successful and it looks like he's got a mouthful of Indian corn. <laughs> like no way, no way can this dude have yeah. money if if and now they're starting to not trust you. Yep. And it's like, you could totally be telling the truth, but you're missing three teeth. Yep. Or it looks like your tongue's in jail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, th this guy's full of shit. Or, oh my God, bad breath. That's even worse. I'd rather look at a fucked up grill <laughs> than, <laughs> smell your, breath. Yeah, than smell like you've been eating, sh you know, shit sandwiches. Yeah. So I'm just giving people real advice. Yeah. I'm just trying to help people. That's what the posts are. For sure. Like patience, my ass. Dude, don't have patience. Don't listen to all the bullshit. And here's another bomb I'm going to drop on y'all bitches. Dude, get off people's nuts. Can you fucking get off people's nuts? Like, not you, people. Yep. Like, it, get off people's nuts. Like, why are you on so many people's nuts? You know how many people are sitting there on someone's nuts? Like, they're going out of style? You know what I mean or no? Yeah, yeah. No, it like, makes sense. Like, like Gary, following like everyone. Gary, well, no, but like if Gary V says, have patience, then their next 10 posts are like, have patience. <laughs> you better have some patience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, you need patience. And it's like, fuck, dude. A, that's Gary's thing. Yep. And B, get off his nuts. Yeah. Like, like, dude, get your own message. Yep. That's the what, biggest thing. What do you believe? Who are you? Like, if I'm going to follow you, dude, I want to see who you are. I don't want to see who you fucking like. Yeah. 
Like, oh, I'm following this guy. 10x this, 10x that, Grant Cardone this, yeah. Grant Cardone that. Like, fucker, I can follow Grant if I want to follow yeah, yeah, Grant. Yeah. I want to I want to see who you no, that's, are. That's, that's a bomb right there because I think that that's the biggest problem I think a lot of people have when building a brand is trying to be like someone else or like you just said, like emulating them so much where you're like, am I following this dude or Grant? Like, if, is he saying the same exact thing and like representing his brand loyalty? That's amazing. But why are people following you? And that's the biggest transition I had when I read Gary's, Gary Vee's book, Crush It. It's like building your brand because like, that's who you are. Like your brand is different than Grant's. His is different than yours because you guys are different. Well, I mean, we're, we're listen, a lot of times I, I've had people say, you know, wh- why are you trying to be Grant? Well, motherfucker, how you know he ain't trying to be me, dick face? <laughs> yeah, Second yeah. of all, because, dude, I, if I'm like Grant, then good. I'm like Grant. Yeah. But that's still me. So if, I, if someone says, oh, you're just like Grant, well, then me and Grant are similar. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm just like Gary Vee then. I just don't believe in patience. Yeah. I'm just like Ed Milet then. You know, I yep. just throw the F-bombs out there. So I'm just like Andy Frisella then. Because I align with all those people. I believe in a lot of the things they believe. But the point is, is when you when I post, it's what I believe. Yep. Now, if I happen to repost someone's shit, like I'll repost your shit if I believe in it. Like if you say something, plus I want to give you a little attention from my followers. Like, hey, yep. look at this dude. That's a good message. Go look at my post, dude. How often yep. have I done it? It's not very often. Yeah. Because if you're going to follow me, I'm going to give you me. I'm tired of fucking looking at people and all they post is other people's shit. Like who are you, bro? Yep. Makes sense. I mean, I think that's, like I said, the biggest problem is understanding what's your content, right? What do you want to put out there that other people can repost? Like sort of, for example, like my podcast, it's, it's answering my questions, but it's also valuable to the audience because I know that I'll put out a poll saying like, what questions do you want answered from Bradley or from Grant Cardone? And understanding your audience is important because putting out content that you believe in, but also resonates with them in the most genuine way is the key. And because whenever I sit down with someone, when it comes to helping them get clear on their brand. Cause I think it's not a problem of growth and collaboration. It's a problem of clarity and people, they, they know what works. They know collaboration works. They know the things that can help them grow, but they're not clear on themselves and their vision for their brand and what they are trying to brand themselves as. So therefore they don't know who to collaborate with. They don't know why to collaborate. They don't know if I hit up Brad, am I going to be talking about fitness or am I an entrepreneur that's trying to put out that kind of content? So the biggest bomb I would say is to figure out your three brand pillars and understanding that clarity is the key to branding. Cause if you don't have clarity, your brand is not clear to your audience. Therefore there, there's no reason to follow you at the end of the day. There's a bomb dizzle right there. That's a good one right there. You said it perfectly. Yep. And I agree a thousand percent with that. So let me ask you a question. Where do people follow you? At Casey Adams one on yep. Instagram. On Instagram. Is that where you prefer? Yeah. At Casey Adams one on Instagram and then at build your empire. That's where we're putting all the build your empire house content. We're doing the daily videos, the one minute clips, like all the stuff we talked about today. There'll be over time, five to 10, one minute clips of all the bombs you dropped on the build your empire page Sweet. because we like showcasing other world class entrepreneurs. So that's there. We're putting out a lot of content on that. And then from a personal perspective at Casey Adams one and then on iTunes rise, the young podcast and the build your empire podcast you guys go check out that dude's podcast this dude's podcast he's he's interviewing all the kings he's only missing one of the kings the final the, no i'm just joking that would be that it, i don't even want to go there i might go to hell for saying that but no this guy interviews some good folks and, and gets some good content so if you guys like that success entrepreneurial hustle type uh, material go check out what's it called rise and grind rise of the young rise of the young yep on iTunes, yep. Spotify, all, iTunes, the, all those Spotify, places. Everything. Go check this dude out. Any website? You got so yeah, a book coming out? Well, it's, it's already, I self published a book last year. It's called Rise the Young How to Build a Personal Brand and How to Overcome Negativity. Because the main thing I just want to put out there before we wrap this up is like the way and the reason I got into everything I'm doing now is I got injured playing football when I was 15. I got diagnosed with inner spinous ligament damage. So I was in a neck brace for like 25 weeks. And that was the time frame of like, all right, I can't, I'm, I lost everything I'm passionate did about, that, which did, is sports. Did that put a damper on the ladies? <laughs> the neck brace? Yeah. Dude, it was funny because I had to wear it to school and like, it was just the attention grabber. Literally like, lit- everyone I knew or people that didn't even know me would just talk to me like, what the hell happened to you? And it was, I was and like, you, yeah, I got attacked I, by a lion. And you said, I've got spinal inner rapinitis. <laughs> 
<laughs> inner spine is looking me damage. But, but yeah, I mean, that's when it comes to um, that's my story. That's why I put out the book. But um, from a website perspective, just CaseyAdams.com and then BuildYourEmpire.co. Yeah. And dude, listen, if you guys are listening out there and you want to hit up the Build Your Empire house, you know, he's looking for people to come contribute, collaborate yep. with. Um, you can learn there. You can network there. When's your next event? January 19th. January 19th, folks, down in Scottsdale. Yep. Right in Scottsdale. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd even think about going there. Where do they go to get tickets? BuildYourEmpire.com? Yeah, BuildYourEmpire.co.co. .co. .co, folks. Go check this guy out. Listen, share this, tag this, and freaking help drop and bombs become the number one podcast i think i slipped i only get 6.9 billion downloads an episode so we got a few people to do <laughs> share it out so we can get the rest of those people in freaking bangladesh that aren't listening and knowing who we are because our mission is to get the knowledge from the people who have it and get it to the people who need it so Boom. we can live in a more successful world until next time